guests who've just reached the venue and will be joining us in the next few minutes. Patience, we shall be starting in the next few minutes. Thank you. A very good evening to all of you and a warm welcome. On behalf of Clefma India, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to all of you all. Today we believe that if the livestock industry of the country is changing, it is because of each and every one of you sitting here, because of your teams, because of the work you weigh together. So may I request all of you to please put your hands together for yourselves, because you're the ones whose vision is making us grow as a country. Earlier today, we heard of how the story of our growth is going to unfold. And I'm sure all of you will look forward to know more about our theme, the Indian livestock farming prospects and role of government policies. And of course, each one of us comes into picture when it belongs from the industry perspective. Clafma today, as you very well know, has over 300 members, including all sectors of livestock industry. We are known to be the voice of the country's dynamic livestock sector. We today are not just recognized in the country, but are globally known. And the credit goes to each and every one of us. We will be focusing on a lot of our points, be it doubling farmer income, government and industry partnership, value addition, and focus on procurement. I'm sure all of you agree that we have many challenges when it comes to our industry. But more than challenges are the fact that all of us are working towards those solutions, working towards making this a better equipped country. So I'd like to thank all of you all for your time. And as we look forward to the next two days, I'd like to request all of you to please put your hands together as I welcome on stage our dignitaries. A round of applause as I welcome Sri Pavan Agarwalji, CEO, Food Safety and Standards Authority of India, Government of India. A warm welcome, sir. I'd like to welcome you to join us on the dais. Please put your hands together once again as we thank sir for his kind presence. A round of applause for him, please. I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to Sri Atul Chaturvedi Ji, Secretary, Department of Animal Husbandry and Dairying, Government of India. A round of applause for Sir as I request him to join us. Your applauses must continue till they join us on stage, please. You're a very kind audience. Thank you. I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to our chairman. A round of applause for Mr. S.V. Bhave, chairman, Rathma. Welcome, sir. May I also present to you Mr. Divya Kumar Gulati, convener, Klefma. A round of applause as I request his kind presence on stage. Please. And as I thank all my audience members for being such an active part each time we meet, I'm sure all of you will agree that presenting flowers is the right way to welcome our special guest. It says that floral welcomes touch hearts. And today, we are honored by the fact that our dignitaries could join us. I'd now like to request Mr. Bhave to please present a floral welcome to our guest, Sri Agarwal. A round of applause for all of you all once again, please. Thank you, sir, for your kind presence. May I now request Mr. Gulati to present a floral welcome to Sri Chaturvedi ji. Thank you so very much, sir. We are pleased to have you amongst us. Ladies and gentlemen, to personally thank you for joining us, to welcome all of you all with heart and more, may I now present to you Mr. Gulati. A round of applause for him, please. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Henry Ford once said, coming together is the beginning, keeping together is progress, and working together is success. And that's what we are doing. Truer words could not have applied to what Clefma has achieved since we last gathered on the agenda of Gen Next Wave, people, technologies, and innovation for the Indian livestock sector. We have one example of a Gen Next sitting here, so it has worked. Having said that, it gives me an immense pleasure on behalf of Indian livestock farming, prospects and role of government policies will most certainly be beneficial for all the stakeholders of the livestock industry. 
at the onset. On behalf of CLIFMA, I would like to congratulate and thank the government of India for recognizing the special and unique status of livestock industry and giving it a separate ministry and independent ministry, Ministry of Fisheries, Animal, Husbandry and Dairying. We really would like to congratulate the government. I would like to thank, thank you. I would like to thank the Honorable Minister Sri Giriraj Singh Ji, who uh, unfortunately cannot make it for the uh, uh, inauguration in the evening, but he did visit us in the me morning, and we had a small program with him in the morning, and he gave us a very inspirational and a passionate speech. Uh, he also launched the nutritional guidelines for feed, which uh, Clefma had prepared, and uh, his speech we would play later on in the day for all the people who had missed his uh, presence in the morning. So you can hear him, what he has to say about the industry and Clifma uh, later on in the evening. A warm welcome to Sri Pawan Agarwalji. Welcome, sir. CEO, Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. A dynamic personality. Sir has brought about a sea of positive changes in his appointment and is leading the transformation of food safety and nutrition landscape of the country. And he is doing it for more than two or three years, I believe, sir. A warm welcome to Sri Atul Chaturvedi Ji, Secretary, Animal Husbandry and Dairy, uh, Ministry of Agriculture, Government of India. Sir has held many important positions in the Government of India and Government of Assam, including Department of Animal Husbandry and Veterinary in Government of Assam. We look forward to your guidance, sir, and hope to work closely with you and develop a relationship akin to your predecessors. Thank you, sirs. Thank you both for taking your precious time to join us at the inauguration. Further, I'm delighted to welcome all the distinguished experts, speakers, and the participants. You've all traveled from various parts of India, and I see a few traveling from international countries also. I thank the experts and panelists for accepting the invitation of CLIFMA and would love for them to share their experiences with us and enlighten us with their invaluable knowledge during the panel discussions tomorrow. The guess, founded in 1967 and now acknowledged as the voice of the country's dynamic livestock sector, one of CLIFMA's primary objectives has been to promote the concept of nutritionally balanced livestock feed as an imperative requisite of animal husbandry development. CLIFMA made this as one of its core objectives in order to aid that hold the most quintessential rung in the animal husbandry ladder, the farmers. Dear guests, coming to this year's title, Indian Livestock Farming, Prospects and Role of Government Policies, why did we choose this topic? Well, the statistics speaks for themselves. We already know livestock sector contributes about 35 to 4.5% of the India's GDP, and it contributes about 25 to 27% of the India's agriculture GDP. We are first in milk, second in shrimps, third in eggs, fourth in broiler. Well, these statistics indicate that the livestock sector is a sunrise sector, and all the stakeholders, including the government, have to work in close coordination, and hence we thought it prudent to choose this subject. Indian livestock farming, prospects, and role of government policies as the subject of deliberation. As we all know, uh, doubling farmers' income by the year 2022 has been high on the government agenda. This is in tune with the commitment of the government to accord priority to the agriculture sector and balancing growth with the welfare of the farmers. The livestock and fishery sector have a critical role to play in meeting this goal. Hence, the government of India has taken the significant step of separating the ministry. And once again, congratulations to the government. Against the above background, this symposium, why are we here, is being organized to build a partnership with the government to take forward the agenda of doubling farmers' income through livestock farming. The industry aims to play a constructive and proactive role in implementing the government policies and programs and be part of framing those policies also. We would like to provide valuable inputs in taking the new and innovative policy initiatives, support the new ministry in building a strong institutional framework for the sector, 
and above all, provide high quality products and services to the farmers. With a healthy blend of experts from the government and the private sector, the deliberations during the symposium are expected to produce tangible and doable ideas to take the sector forward towards a sustainable growth. All the panel discussions have been designed around the theme of strong partnerships of all stakeholders to achieve the larger goal of healthy contribution of livestock and fishery sector in doubling farmers' income, in benefiting the farmers. CLIFMA is committed to take the outcomes of this symposium forward by way of positive action and support the government and the sector. It also reaffirms its commitment to continue efforts to provide high quality feed, the most vital component in livestock at affordable prices to the millions of farmers. This demonstration, this symposium is a demonstration of this commitment. Dear sir, the outcome of this symposium we would definitely like to share with our department so that we could move forward in how to frame the policies of the future. I would once again like to thank uh, Union Minister Shri Giriraji to grace us in the morning, Shri Pawan Agarwalji, Shri Atul Chaturvedi ji for being a part of this symposium. I won't like to take much of your time. I welcome you all. The members, delegates, panelists, awardees and guests from India overseas to Dilwalon ki Dilli. I hope this symposium will be beneficial for all of us. My personal respect and thanks to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much, Mr. Gulati, for setting the tone for the next couple of days. And like he said, we are hoping that all of you have some fantastic takeaways from the symposium. Well, it is often said that whenever we start something positive, we must seek the blessings of the Almighty. And we are going to do the very same this evening, but in a different way, because we in this industry try to create an ishway ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm now about to present to you a very talented artist as we seek the blessings of Lord Ganesha. Dr. Anish Vidyashankar is known as the walking wildness. He creates music through soul. He touches your hearts and more. He's known to be India's most melodious infusion violinist. He is one of the youngest artists to receive a doctorate in his field. May I request all of you to please put your hands together as he brings to us the Ganesh Vandana. <laughs>
so very much, Anish. I'm sure Lord Ganesha is smiling upon us all, thanks to Anish. Once again, a round of applause for him, please. What a pleasure this has been. And ladies and gentlemen, now for the auspicious lamp lighting ceremony, may I please request our dignitaries to join us. Once again, a round of applause for Sri Pravana Garwalji, Sri Atul Chaturvedi ji, Mr. Bhave, Mr. Divya Kumar Gulati. I'd like to request all of you to please join us for the lamp lighting ceremony. As live violin plays for all of us. We create memories this evening. Your applauses add so much more flavor. Shri Chaturvedi doing the honors. once again for adding so much more. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure each one of you will agree with the words of Steve Jobs when he says that individuals work towards good work, but when teams work, they bring about great work. And I'm now about to invite one such leader who believes in team effort, who takes the team forward. May I please request all of you to put your hands together for our chairman, Mr. S. V. Bhave, as I request him to address our audience. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and dignitaries on dais, Shri Pawan Kumar, Pawan Agarwalji, or Atul Chaturvedi. As a chairman of CLEPMO of India, the Apex National Association representing animal protein sector of India, it's my pleasure and great honor to welcome you all to our 61st National Symposium today. I extend my sincere gratitude to our extreme dignitaries, special guests, experts, speakers, delegates, and all other who have supported to make this event to be successful. CLAPMA has successfully completed 52 years of journey. I can say this is a 52 year young organization. And is going from strength to strength, supported by active and committed members. Last year, we had our symposium at Hotel Sida Dedi, Goa, witness senior policymakers, regulatory authorities, along with several shining stars of industry and academia. This year, the symposium is quite unique. And the subject cho chosen for symposium is Indian livestock farming prospects and role of government policies. The symposium will have deliberations addressing the role of government policies that will foster sustainable growth in Indian livestock sector. The hallmark of this symposium is to have panel discussions about the current and future prospects of the livestock industry and will deliberate it by the industry stalwarts, experts, and diverse stakeholders. The symposium would aim at identifying workable, practical, practicable, and implementable solutions for the growth and development of animal agriculture and disseminate key elements of the symposium outcomes to all our stakeholders. The symposium has been carefully designed and the sessions and the speakers judiciously selected so as to ensure that the best possible talent and inputs are made available to all the participants. There would be purpose-oriented discussions during the each session which would deal with the various challenges faced by the animal agricultural stakeholders. 
the symposium would be attended by large number of senior officials from the industry, then academic institute, institutions, farmers, poultry integrators, government institutions, and international organizations. The Indian livestock industry sector contributes to around 4.5% of the India GDP. The milk and milk product processing industry in India will rise at an overall compound annual growth rate of around 20.5%. The frozen shrimp and fish continue to dominate the export basket. Poultry meat is the fast, hence thought it prudent to have industry interaction with the ministry. With regards to activities conducted by CLAPMA last year, I would like to quote few of them. CLAPMA has made various representation for the betterment of industry, like cage band litigation, to release wheat under controlled price for betterment of poultry industry. CLAPMA sought a clarification by making representation to classify the shrimp larva feed, larval feed to be taken into consideration as 5% duty under notification number 12 oblique 2012. The same has been accepted by the Tax Research Institute, Department of Revenue, Ministry of Finance and Government of India. CLAPMA delegation has a meeting with Joint Secretary Trade, Department of Animal Husbandry, Dairy, Fishery and CLAPMA will be submitting the fields, I cannot say standard, but CLAPMA will be submitting the nutritional guidelines for all poultry, dairy and aqua to the ministry. With regard to feed activity additives list, till date we have submitted around five feed additive list. And I would like to say that in a very near future, all the file list will be approved. CLAPMA has also conducted series of technical seminars. One in Pune, one in Karnal, one in Nasik, one in Patna, as well as it is in association with local uh, farmers associations or local bodies. Asian Livestock Industry greeted CLAPMA for presentation at VIV Asia 2019 Bangkok. It shows CLAPMA active outreach internationally as well. Considering the potential of livestock industry, government has created a new dedicated ministry for fisheries, animal husbandry, and dairying. So now our livestock sector has its own parent ministry, and it will be easy for the stakeholders to resolve the different issues and problems with the new ministry. CLAPMA plans to have more and more interaction with the ministry now. Feed can be considered as a part of food chain. So government is planning to involve FSSAI in manufacturing of animal feed, feed additives and feed supplement. But then I think Sri Pawan Agarwalji can put a more light on this since he is here. I am confident that during the two days, there will be plenty of opportunities for all the participants to share and discuss the critical issues faced by the industry and have interaction with senior government representatives. An outcome of this would help to accelerate the overall growth of livestock sector in sustainable manner and improve the well-being of several livestock farmers and other related stakeholders in the livestock sector. This is all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, sir. Like he very rightly said that these two days, this platform is a very interesting one for all of us to share our issues. We have uh, our experts here with us and we're looking forward to this being a two-way communication for all of us uh, to have a learning experience and at the same time work towards the growth of the industry. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is a visionary himself. An IAS of 1986 batch from Assam and Meghalaya Kader. He's had vast experience having served as the first CEO of the Assam State 
Disaster Management Authority. He has also in the past served as additional secretary in the Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion under Ministry of Commerce. In fact, behind the project, Make in India, he has a vast role to play. We thank him for that and we look forward to its growth as well. He is the one who is creating a different vision in making animal husbandry a commercially vibrant sector now that we have an entire ministry dedicated to us and our industry. May I request each one of you to please put your hands together for Sri Atul Chaturvedi, Secretary of Department of Animal Husbandry and Dairying, Ministry of Fishery, AH and Dairy, Government of India, addressing all of us on the theme. Sir? So good evening, uh, Mr. Bhave, Mr. Gulati, uh, my colleague, Mr. Pavan Agrawal, and my senior, Mr. Tarun Sridhar, who's also here, uh, the stakeholders from this industry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm around 21 days old in this uh, department because uh, I was, uh, in a different ecosystem for the last seven years. And before this, uh, I did uh, handle this particular sector at a state level of Assam, which is a very small state compared to handling this particular sector at a national level. So please pardon my ignorance in case uh, I may sound a little stupid sometime at this juncture, but I will try my best to give you my perspective on what I've understood in last 21 days and, uh, and what is my perspective on this, uh, which we can take it forward. I did share it with some of you uh, who were there in my office uh, yesterday. And uh, I would now try sharing the whole thing with you uh, all and uh, would seek your guidance on how do we take this forward and whether is this the right direction or the direction has to be something else. As far as our Prime Minister vision is concerned, which you must have all known by now, in addition to what Mr. Gulati said about doubling the farmer's income, there's another vision of five trillion economy which we have to achieve in uh, next five years, up to 24, 25. Now this five trillion economy uh, paper we had pre prepared when I was uh, in my previous department of DIPP and how we are going to achieve this five trillion. And we had broken it down to various sectors. And obviously three trillion was the service sector, one trillion was manufacturing, and one trillion was agriculture. Agriculture right now is around uh, 270 to 280 uh, billion, which uh, we have to take it to one trillion in the next four and a half to five years from now. Now reaching that one trillion mark, as far as the agriculture is concerned, agriculture alone can't do it. The sector like animal husbandry, dairy and fishery will, go, will be very important contributor to that one trillion, which will thereafter add up to five trillion in terms of all the other sectors put together. So therefore the importance of this sector, not only for doubling farmers' income, but also realizing the vision of our Prime Minister to reach five trillion economy is very important. And therefore, I sat around with my officers and uh, tried understanding what is it which is happening as of now and what is it which we need to do. And obviously, this particular vision can't be realized unless we have the industry with us, in addition to the government. So your uh, topic of prospects and roles of government policy will be meaningless unless we have the industry and the other stakeholders along with us in this whole journey of uh, next five years as far as the vision of uh, the Prime Minister is concerned. Now, I don't need to tell you uh, where we are in terms of uh, agriculture and how uh, 
the issues regarding land holding or issues regarding the rain-fed agriculture and whole lot of other extraneous circumstances, uh, which, is, uh, which is what uh, may be coming in uh, the right kind of growth for that particular sector and right kind of speed which we need to pick it up from there. While on the other side we have another sector, which is the animal husbandry and dairy, which is like an ATM for the farmer because uh, his daily household needs are met through this particular sector. Here is a sector in which your working capital can be redeployed 365 days in a year. And if this particular working capital is increased in a way so that uh, it's not only takes care of his household, but also takes care of the community, and then in, it also takes care of the district, or it takes care of the state, or it takes care of the country. So therefore, what is it which we need to do with reference to various areas? So let us take, say, milk. We are number one milk producer of the world. So what? Where are we in terms of the productivity? We are at right at the bottom in that particular sector. We produce around 1,800 kg per year compared to where Israel is or where US is. They are sitting at 10,000, we are at 1,800. So what is it which we need to do in that particular area? And we have to see a vision and we have to realize that particular vision. So therefore I told my officers that in terms of the productivity of the animals, can we think of taking the productivity of our indigenous breed to a New Zealand level, which is around 4,000 kg in five years? So from 1,800, can we reach 4,000 kg per year as far as the indigenous breed is concerned? Or can we think of taking our buffalo productivity in terms of milk to a Germany level, which is around 7,800 kg a year. So, so therefore, uh, and obviously the other breed of exotic, we could think of taking it to 10,000 kg a year. And reduce this particular category called non-descript to zero in next five years. Now obviously, the breed improvement cannot happen only by looking at the technology of sex sorted semen or embryo technology or in vitro and stuff and artificial insemination, fine. But one of the most critical factor in all that in terms of the breed improvement is by each one of you where the role of so-called compound uh, livestock feed or nutrition or fortified food which we provide to our animal play a very important role in that particular aspect. So therefore, not only in terms of the breed improvement uh, you have a role to play, similar is the role in the other sector whether you take, take uh, issue related to bovine meat or whether you take issues related to uh, pork and uh, uh, piggery or whether you take issues related to layer and broiler, where again we are number three, number four, number five in the world. So therefore, the, uh, the approach has to be multi-pronged in terms of realizing this particular vision with reference to increase in bovine meat or increase in milk or increase in pig and pork, which again is a huge market in the world. Now in terms of milk, uh, there's a huge export market waiting to be tapped in terms of the value-add products. We are right now 0.1% of the world export, even though we are the largest milk producer of, our, of the world. Now, in addition to doing all this, and if we, if we are seeing a vision of reaching a US level or New Zealand level or Germany level in terms of the productivity, the other very important aspect which is going to play a huge role is reducing the disease incidence or reducing the disease prevalence among the animals of our country. And therefore, 
Our Prime Minister, in his second term, when he took over, in the first cabinet meeting, the government decided that we will have a national level program to control and eradicate foot and mouth disease and brucellosis from this country. Because that are the, these are the two major diseases uh, which are affecting not only the productivity but also marketability of our product within this country and overseas. And therefore, this is a massive program which has been undertaken with uh, big allocation which government has given. In fact, uh, when I, when I uh, joined uh, uh, this department in a couple of days from then, I came across an article which was written by my predecessor, Mr. Tarun Sridhar, about this particular program. And uh, along with that, another article on tagging and thereafter. So I've been seeing that and benefiting out of all that knowledge of my predecessor. And I've been also continuously in conversation with him to see how we can better implement these programs. Now this particular program of disease control which we have undertaken is a huge program and uh, it requires a lot of planning. I am I'm already engaged in that particular activity over the last uh, few weeks which I have been in this uh, department. Other aspect which we are also trying to debate and work out is with reference to the processing and marketing aspect of uh, if we generate that much of milk or if we make our animal disease free or if we improve our breed, then a whole lot of excess or surplus would come in and that will have to be processed, value added and not only sold in the domestic market but also be sold outside and exported. Now one 